and minimalists. So let's let's go back to some of those very early days, and I want to even start before you you started the minimalist, and you know you're at that lonely lunch table, senior year of high school, trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. Decide to go down this this corporate path and <laughs> and set your your eyes on making your first fifty thousand yeah. um, dollars. Yeah. You know, was the corporate path the only path that you guys saw at that point in your life? And I'm also curious what success looked like for you as young, fresh green 18 year olds man for me like I grew up with my dad owning his own business painting and hanging wallpaper and he got by but it was just like he was just barely getting by and I remember when I graduated high and I I worked I worked for him uh during high school during the summers but when I graduated like my plan was to work for him and then eventually take over the business but then I like started to realize at like 18 19 years old I'm like wait a minute like I'm putting in like 40, 50 hours a week and hardly getting by myself. Uh, I don't want to take this business over. And your dad was always having money problems. Always. While he owned the business. He lit- I remember one day when he was paying his taxes, he wrote a letter, to put in his taxes. He's like, hey, I'm sorry that my taxes are short. I had to feed my family. And like just wow. send in a short check. Holy cow. I know, man. And it's the government never got back to him either. Like I don't know if they let it slide or what. But that's amazing that he wrote them a letter because most him people a letter. just don't pay. Yeah. He was <laughs> like he's like, here's what I here's what I have. Like, sorry, I defeat my family. But you know, when when I graduated high school, college wasn't an option. Um, being raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, they do not encourage college. The end of the world's gonna be here, so why would you go to college? Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. <laughs> Think about how how dangerous that mindset oh, is. So like growing bad. up as a kid, y- you were basically told like, eh, "I don't worry about it. Go into debt. Forget about college, uh, because you know we're all going to see the end of the world within the next ten years." I yeah. mean, there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, this is totally an aside, but th- there are a lot of cases like in the late '80s uh, or maybe early '80s only. The, we'll just say the 80s, yeah. uh, where Maybe it was the mid that 80s. organization specifically had this huge wave of um, bankruptcies in their organization because that's exactly the... I mean, they uh, went out and took out loans m- more than what they could afford, thinking that, well, I'm, I'm not going to have to pay back this loan. I'll just you know go ahead and do this, and Jesus will come and, and, and save everything and fix everything. Wow. But anyway, so, so college was not an option. Um, I certainly couldn't afford it. I never saved for it. I had no idea... Um, I had no idea he, how, how to even approach going to college. I remember like when I, when I actually did go to college, I started when I was 25 years old and I was talking to my boss and uh, she, this was in the corporate world because the corporation paid for 100% of it. So I was like, well, I might as well go to school if they're going to pay for it. And I went to my boss and I'm like, hey, can you help me figure out how to go to college? And the look on her face was like, She's like, did no one ever sit you down like when you graduated high school and show you like how to apply? <laughs> I'm like, no. Like I got out of high school, I started working for my dad, and realized, you know, two years into it, this sucks. Uh, I remember telling my dad, I'm like, Dad, you work this much. Some days he come in, dude, and he's he's got this stress dot above his. It's like right between his eyes, and if you see that dot, you just don't talk to him because he's so stressed out. Is it like blotchy red skin kind of thing? Yeah, and it's only at this one spot. It's really weird, right between mm. his eyes. But but my point is, is, I remember like seeing that dot one day, and I'm like, Dad, you make X amount of dollars, and you work X amount of hours a week. This doesn't make sense to me. Like, mm. there's got to be something else out there that we can do or that I can do. And, you know, eventually, I was talking to Josh about what he was doing, and I remember him telling me, um, he was yeah, he's like, I'm selling cell phones. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, how much money do you make selling cell phones? He's like, oh, I don't know. I think this 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 month I made like sixty five hundred bucks, seven thousand bucks. This is back in two thousand and one, and he was in Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> and and he was and he's you know twenty years old, twenty one, and I'm like, I thought he was lying. I'm like, dude, no way. I blew it off for months and months, um, maybe even a year or so. I just remember uh, I was in Josh's wedding and we got to, uh, you know, we we were talking more and more about um, me doing something different. I hated what I was doing at the time. And finally, I was like, all right, dude, I'll try it out. And yeah, like that first month, I made like, actually, that's not true. Remember the first couple months, it was like the slow, yeah, <laughs> slow you period. Were doing about, you were, anyway, were you thinking about firing my there, hand? No, like, no, 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 no. It wasn't no, the, the entire company was oh, okay. just slow. Yeah, it was just, it was just a really weird time. But that first commission check I got, um, it was a couple months later. 
and it was like 4500 bucks. And the first thing I did is I went and bought a new truck. I was like, sweet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, I can, af- I can afford a down payment <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to get you another really payment. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, it was it was an interesting uh, it was an interesting uh, start to to a, a new career. I mean, I was really excited, and I, you know, for all intents and purposes, man, I loved it for the first you know couple few years. But you know, it gets it, it wears on you after a while. What was the question again? I <laughs> I, I tried to drop out of high school, and um, oh, that's right. Uh, my my the counselor you know the the high school counselor he, you basically go to him and talk to him about why you want to drop out and part of the reason was like all the friends in my, my neighborhood had already dropped out um at least most of them and it was my senior year and i was just like so done and i wanted i, I knew i wanted to do something in business but but i also knew that that i i wasn't going the college route and i'm like this high school thing is it doesn't make any sense. I'm, I was already like 17 at the time and I wanted to just move on. And he, he got to the point where he, he wouldn't let me drop out of high school. Um, but I got, he was able to convince me that basically he could stack my whole schedule with a bunch of study halls and I'd take two or three classes to graduate. And he let me take off the entire second semester of of my senior year of high school because otherwise he knew I was done but I knew I wasn't going to go to college and so I went out and got full-time job sales job and that's when I started climbing the corporate ladder and it was weird I just said yes to this thing because of of money that was the primary driver we all need to make money and I said well here's the best opportunity to make money but I didn't really know what I was going to do with the money I thought I was so unhappy growing up because we didn't have any money really poor food stamps government assistance and and money would obviously solve all of my problems. If I could just have enough money, then, then I would be happy. And then, of course, I, by age 19, I was making more money than I ever saw my parents make when I, when I was growing up. You know, my dad wasn't around. It was just my mom raising me. And so I had debt for the first time. It's not like I was making great money. I, I was more broke than I was a year prior because I had these credit cards that showed up in the mail. And then I started renting out a nicer apartment and realized like I was saying yes to everything that looked appetizing to my life. Right. It it was, it was appealing at the time. And so I, in a weird way, ended up sitting in the passenger seat of my own life where, because I had said yes to all these other things. Like all of a sudden I wasn't in control anymore. Like someone else was driving. It was the credit cards, the job that I started work. I was working 80 hours a week and I was really good at it too. And that was another problem. You get all these accolades and you win these president's club awards and they send you off on trips to Hawaii or London or wherever. And, and then they give you these promotions and you start climbing this corporate ladder and you get to this point where it gets scary to look down. So you just keep climbing up. And I was the youngest director in my company's history by age 27, 140 year old telecom company. And I got really close to the guys I aspired to be like. I had a whole plan in place. I was going to be a uh, vice president by age 32, which is really young now. Um, I was going to be a senior vice president by age 35, a C-level executive by age 40. Like that was my plan as I, as I was climbing. But it all started at when I was 18 and decided I'm going to go this path. It wasn't a deliberate path. It was just a I'll say yes to this, I guess. And I think that's okay, especially when you're young, to say yes to a bunch of things early on, but keep questioning those things. And that's where I I ran astray. I wasn't questioning any of it. Well, this is the path I'm supposed to take. I've already gotten this far, uh, and so I'll keep climbing. And But as I got closer to those guys, I really aspired to be like, like I really want to be the CFO one day, or COO is what I really wanted to be. But as I got closer to some of these guys, man, they were miserable heart attacks and third divorces and and huge money problems even though they were making seven figures some of them uh, or really close to it and then I realized that well if I follow that same path I'm going to end up in the same place I think we all tell ourselves like well I'll be different but why if you if you follow the same recipe you're going to bake the same cake as someone else and so that's kind of where 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 I ended up and in this place of not true discontent but of a place of, of dissatisfaction, um, and, and it lacked anything meaningful to me. And so, of course, 
I try to pacify myself with with pleasure, basically. It sounds like minimalism came at the perfect time for you because given the choice at 18 years old where it's like, hey, do you want all this money right. or do you want minimalism? Right. <laughs> like, I don't mm. think you would have chosen minimalism at that point in your life. Um, but you, you'd gone through a lot of uh, experience and you, you saw for yourself what worked and what didn't work. Was it that you, you knew that you were dis- discontent or was it minimalism that helped pull you out of that and realize that this wasn't for you? Well, there's nothing wrong with money. First off, like I think money can be great. It allows you to accomplish a lot if you use it deliberately. The problem that I had throughout my twenties is you, know, I grew up poor and I thought the reason we were discontented is we didn't have money. The reason we were actually discontented is we made repeated bad decisions with the little money that we did have and I just carried those decisions forward into my 20s. Had had I made good decisions with that money, there was a point in my career where I was making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in in Dayton, Ohio, uh, which we're out in Los Angeles now. I don't can't even imagine what that would be like like here you, you, you it, it's you know orders of magnitude different, but but the point being is if I would have made better decisions with that money, then I think I still could have led a meaningful life. You, you can be a rich person and, and live a meaningful life. You can be a poor person and live a meaningful life. I've seen both sides of, of the spectrum. Minimalism showed up at a time for me where it f- felt like I got into those two car crashes. You know, my, my marriage ended, my mother died both in the same month. And, and, and you know, it feels like you get just t-boned at a light and then someone else rams into you right after that but then there was almost like this after the accident someone ran over my foot because i realized like no i wasn't very contented with with what i was doing for my corporate career and it's not that i hated it but it was comfortable it was a a six out of ten and that was actually part of the problem is like it, it, it got in the way of everything meaningful in my life, my health, my relationships. I wasn't writing like I wanted to write. I wasn't creating how I wanted to create. I certainly wasn't contributing in a meaningful way, but I was making a good income. I had a nice house. I had several Lexuses, and I realized like... <laughs> Is it Lexuses or Lexi? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Sean's not here to look it up for us. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. and so you, you get you get to this point where you are are comfortable and you're afraid to lose that comfort mm. and minimalism was a way for me to realize that that comfort was a bit of a facade and, and, and I, comfort was getting in the way of what i consider to be meaningful 